In this video, we'll talk about cell fractionation using ultracentrifugation. So cell fractionation allows the separation of different components and sub uh, sectors of the cell and macromolecules. So basically, this is a technique by which sub compartments of the cell can be isolated by the researchers. And now this particular technique literally opened the door for a lot of development in the cell biology field. So in a simple word, this is one of the milestone um, experimental technique that has changed or revolutionized the cell biology. So let us try to understand how cell fractionation work. It's basically happening inside the ultra centrifuge. This video is not to elaborate the principles about ultra centrifuge, but this is more application oriented. So imagine you have a cell lysate, which has different uh, components of the cell demarked by these different colors. You can see these components has different sizes and shapes. So this cell lysate would have nucleus, mitochondria, lysosome, everything all together. And as a cell biologist, our goal is to like literally separate these fractions and isolate semi-pure fra fractions from the, that. So the first step is to centrifuge at low speed, like 10,000 G for 10 minutes. If you do that, then what happens is all the big particles, for example, nucleus, whole cells or even cytoskeleton would mostly precipitate down at this speed. So one can literally take out the supernatant and uh, take the pellet for further process processing. Then basically you can centrifuge this supernatant at a medium speed. And in this medium speed, which means like 20,000 G, 20, G at for 20 minutes would eventually precipitate a little bit more heavy component, uh, components like mitochondria, lysosome or peroxisome. So these components are uh, less heavy compared to the nucleus or the entire cell, but still heavier than other components. Now then even higher speed centrifugation like 80,000 G for one hours can literally precipitate down microsomes and small vesicles. One can literally take out these supernatants and take the pellets for further processing. Then if somebody spins this at 1500 G for, <clears throat> so sorry, 150,000 G for three hours, then what happens is even the smaller particles, which might has ribosomes, large molecules, all get precipitated at the bottom. So depending upon the time of centrifugation and the speed of centrifugation, different organelles and different subcellular fractions can be obtained. And this is very useful for cell biologists or biochemists to do subsequent analysis. Let us take some example to understand. But before that, let me tell you there are finer structures which can be uh, separated using two modalities. One is velocity sedimentation, which uh, basically uh, separate stuff based on size and shape and it is having a shallow gradient of sucrose mostly 5 to 20 percent so here is a sample mix and after centrifugation what would happen is two uh, particular sub components would be separated out there would be a fast sedimenting component and a slow sedimenting component and there is another thing called equilibrium sed sedimentation technique where their density matches the surroundings and they stop at a particular density point. Here a steeper gradient of sucrose is used, 20 to 70 percent of sucrose to be more precise. Here is a sample mix, eventually it would get separated and the place where these macromolecules would stop in and form a band in the centrifuge tube is basically a region where the density of the solution is equal to the density of those particles. There it stops. Anyway, there are many applications of this cell fractionation technique. For example, if one want to isolate or try to look at the localization of protein X in the cell, one can use this kind of technique. One can literally fractionate different portion of the cell and then ask a question, where is my protein of interest found in the nucleus mitochondria? And in this example, you can see Western blot has detected the presence of that particular protein in the lysosome, but not in other sub compartments. So this is one type of application. One can literally aim for some specific enzyme assay, which involves isolation of mitochondrial enzyme. In order to isolate mitochondrial enzyme, one has to isolate the intact mitochondria first. And that could be done using cell fractionation method. 
So here mitochondrial fractions can be extracted, then the enzymes that are present in mitochondria exclusively can be extracted for further enzyme assay. This is another application. Let's say somebody want to look at ligand dependent translocation of a, a particular uh, nuclear receptor. So with ligand it translocated into the nucleus, without ligand it is present in the cytoplasm. If this is true, one can literally use the ultracentrifugation to create a cytoplasmic and nuclear fraction and then literally probe for the protein of interest in the cytoplasmic or the nuclear fraction. Here you can notice that N which is marked by nuclear fraction has increased a level of this protein when ligand is added. Look at the plus sign and look at the N. Look how the cytoplasmic fraction has depleted over time and the nuclear fraction has enriched. This literally means that the protein has moved into the nucleus when ligand was added. So these kind of experimental ideas can be obtained from this particular technique. And this is super important technique for a cell biologist. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.